What's good, people, and welcome to part two of the Producing in Pro Tools series. I'm your boy, Jay Kitts, a.k.a. the Pro Tools producer. And in this video, we're going to do more of a breakdown, go under the hood and pull out some of the details that helps you create a workflow for your production in Pro Tools. So let's not waste any time. Let's just jump right into it, man. Jay Kitts, Jay Kitts, Jay Kitts. So in part one, I went over a few customizations and I didn't get to talk about the keyboard shortcuts. I wanted to save it for this video. So let's go to the menu and click setup, go to keyboard shortcuts. And here we can see pretty much every single shortcut there is that Pro Tools has to offer. And what you can do here is customize it to any hotkey you prefer. So for example, my personal hotkey for separating a clip is simply pressing E. And so when I turn this off and press E, it's nothing happening. Now the default command is command E, just like that. So I just make sure that this is turned on and now I'm able to use all of my custom shortcuts. And like I mentioned in the first video, functionality is super important for me. You know, for instance, if I'm zooming in and out, you know, I can go here and click, but that kind of takes up a little bit of wrist bandwidth. So I went ahead and put it on my plus and minus keys instead. And now I'm able to get there much faster and it's just way simpler for me. All right, next I'm gonna talk about nudging. And if you don't understand what nudging is, it's basically moving a region to the right or to the left, whether it's very slight or to a greater value, you have that ability in Pro Tools as well. And guys, I'm gonna do an entire video on nudging just as a technique for production. It's a long story, but nudging has so much gold in it. And I'm gonna make sure that I break that down even further for you in the future. But for now, let's just look up at our transport area and you can see nudge right underneath grid. We can change its properties from bars and beats to minutes and seconds, and I always keep it on samples for me personally. You can also switch the value of the nudge from up to 10,000 down to one sample. I always keep it on 100, I'm just used to that feel. And I use it for many different reasons, but let's say I wanna just nudge it just to the right ever so slight. I'm not sure if you can see it moving, but I am tapping my finger like crazy. But that's the small increment change that you can use to putting things in a certain place on the timeline. You can also nudge it to a greater value. So let's say I wanna move it, I think it's a thousand samples to the right. You can actually see it moving a little bit more. And that's just a better way for me to move around regions slightly instead of going to like slip and having to like literally move things to these increments, nudging always does it for me. So next, I always have my tab, the transients on, this selection right here. What this does is it reads the next transient in a region, meaning it kind of detects the next sound. So that's a great thing for me, especially when I'm chopping samples. So we'll look at this section of the audio region. So when I hit tab, it will detect the next transient or will pick up the sound. And it's not perfect. You sometimes have to keep tabbing over until you get to that sweet spot. It's definitely a necessity for me, but that's pretty much what it does. Another thing I didn't cover in the first video was shuffle. So how I use shuffle is, let's say this is the first verse. This part is our hook and this part is our second verse. And let's just say we wanna move the hook to the very beginning. All we have to do is make sure that shuffle is selected and we drag over to the left, boom. Now that's here and the first verse has moved up here to the second slot and that's pretty much how shuffle works. You can kind of move things around however you like and it will detect kind of like an edge and it'll just move in place wherever that last section was. Next, I wanna bring back up events operations. I covered a little bit of that in the first video uh, where we have quantize, we can change the velocity, we have transpose, and pretty much those are the three main ones that I use. And being able to click the events operations button is a nice touch. That's also a new thing that Pro Tools has. I'm just so used to pressing option zero to bring it up or option T to bring up transpose. And you can transpose the semitones or however many octaves you want and Hit apply and it's a done deal. And how I change the velocity of MIDI, I just select this automation lanes button here and now I can see the velocity principles where I can move that up and down to whatever liking I need. Also in the automation lane section, you can see volume, mute, pan, even with your controllers too, with modulation wheel, sustain, expression, um, just so many different options, man. And it's set to velocity on default anyway, so. All right, so let's create some tracks. We hit Shift, Command, N, and that brings up our new tracks window. You can also go up here to the menu bar and select track, select new, and it brings up the same thing. Now you just read this like a sentence, create one new mono audio track and samples, 
name it whatever you wish, hit create, and there she is. We can also create groups of different tracks at once. So all we have to do is hit this plus symbol. So let's say we wanna do three different groups. I wanna create three new mono audio tracks, three new stereo audio tracks, and three new stereo auxiliary inputs. Hit create, and voila. We have three monos, three stereos, and three auxes, just like that. And so next on our tracks, we have an inserts section and a sends section here. And all we have to do is select our inserts to access our plugins, which are organized so immaculately. And I can basically choose any kind of plugin that I need. But more importantly, since we're producing in it, we just go down to instrument to access all of the VSTs and virtual instruments that I have. And we can just pull that up and there we are. And then from here, we would create a MIDI track and then in our MIDI track, we would just route it to our virtual instrument, trigger it. We in there. Next, let's look at Audio Suite. And here we can see all of our plugins pretty much. Uh, same thing we saw in our plugins window when we access it through the inserts section on the track. But in Audio Suite, you're able to select anything you need and actually render it or commit it to basically its DNA. We just hit render and now it's processed the audio pretty much for good. And the only thing I really ever used in Audio Suite was for gaining, but we don't even need this now because you can actually gain it right here in the audio region itself. And I think that came out in Pro Tools 10 if I'm not mistaken, but it's always been a nice touch. Now let's say we wanna change the tempo and the key of this loop right here. So the BPM of this loop here is 90, and let's say we wanna speed it up to 100 BPM and to pitch it up one semitone. So here's the loop. Okay, so let's change the key and the tempo by first going to the track and selecting polyphonic here. Then we change this from samples to ticks. Then we go right up to our tempo and change that to 100 BPM. And now let's hear it sped up. Okay, and let's pitch it up one semitone. We just select it, hit apply. All right, let's take a listen. And that's easy does it. Now, one of the questions that I'm asked the most is how do I convert my MIDI tracks into an audio track, especially when trying to send out stems? Now, first, let me say that Pro Tools used to make this so complicated, man. It was very time consuming and would wreck my brain every time. I should do a video showing you guys how I used to do it, but I care about y'all. I wanna protect your sanity. But thankfully, Pro Tools has made a very simple way to do it. But let's check out the MIDI track first. All right, just a simple pad. And so to convert this into audio, we just right click the MIDI track, select commit, then hit okay. And so after it's done its thing, we just make it a little bit larger and here's our stem. And there it is, just like that. Man, the many hours I could have been saving myself. So let's talk about automations. We can select our automation lane button. And again, we can see volume, mute, pan, and right here, we can make all of our automation changes to the volume. Um, we can also draw it as a, you know, we can pencil it in here, however we like. They have different pencil types where you can do like a line and it'll basically give you a nice straight line down. And we can also automate in real time while it's playing by either selecting right or latch. And I personally use latch because automation only turns on once I trigger it whereas right is a constant automation. So I'll show you guys real quick. And we're just gonna automate the volume on this track up here. And once we hit play, we're gonna see that writing starts. J -Kids, J -Kids. As you can see, it's already writing here. Then we can just move it up and down like so. As opposed to using latch, we can do it just like this. You hit play but we see that it's not actually writing any automation. But now once I trigger it, it starts. And that's just a cool feature that I always use. Easy peasy. And now the last thing I wanna show you guys is how I'm able to take audio and convert that into MIDI. And so here's the loop again. So we just take the audio and drag it to the MIDI track. And in this window, you have a number of different options to actually convert it into MIDI. But I find that polyphonic sustain gives me the most accurate one. 
Decay is cool, but I just stick with this one for now. And it doesn't come out perfect, but at least I have the bass to make the changes I need. Then we just hit OK. And there's our MIDI. So if we take a listen to that. Definitely not perfect. <laughs> but again, it's something that I can work with. And so there we have it. That's pretty much a breakdown of the essentials or all the essentials that I use when producing in Pro Tools. And I hope that this was helpful. Have any questions? Don't forget to leave it in the comments or email jkits.funonmonday at gmail.com to have your questions answered in future Q&A content.